and also the best we can be, both you know, personally, oh, yes. mentally, yes. And, and physically. There's also, I believe, a myriad of topics that we could discuss related to our overall well-being and health, nutritional, psychological, and spiritual eating. And, and um, we, as uh, friends, do um, find it very interesting how um, currently in 2017, and we're just in the first week of January, we've uh, seen a lot of um, newspaper articles, magazine articles, um, and uh, you know, television and so forth, and the net talking about this very, very topic. Um, because as you know, a resolution in the new year, it's always about guilt <laughs> and how to become unguilty, <laughs> guilt-free, so that and also the best we can be, both you know, traditionally, oh, yes. mentally, yes. And, and physically. So, so the the media right. is uh, inundated. Right, and, and it, I just uh, have been ex discussing with Ava while I came to the studio today. Ava was snacking on Majul dates, and ah, yes. they are sweet, very sweet, totally vegan, healthy, positive so iron 15, in it. Like 15, how many different things? vitamins in it, and yeah. minerals, and and delicious. And there was a. There was a, you, like you showed me perhaps uh, you could tell them about this recent article about 10 superfoods, they yeah. called them. And yeah. I, I always called them that too, is uh, super herbs or superfoods or a rock star, rock star <laughs> foods, oh, yes. rock star um, dietary um, uh, formulas, yeah. shall we say. And so just as a tip to you, and we like to, well, what we'll, do is give you these tips along the way. Um, those foods can um, primarily start with the ancient grains. Very much so. Very much so, and which I, I'm a recovering omnivore from the previous show, you probably saw me drinking wine, and now I'm <laughs> a teetotaler in 2017. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> but now I tell, you know, this is very interesting about wine, because it started out with a conversation about wine and alcohol, because of all the um, legal drugs, mm -hmm. um, that people are addicted to, I'd say alcohol was number one. And so the wine industry is very strong um, culturally. Right? And in every country now. And in every country. Now, Christina, my uh, aust not so austere. <laughs> Watch what you're saying. We have viewers here who will support me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, loves wine. And so you permit yourself two glasses of wine a per night. day. Yeah. Um, and, and it's, you know, uh, probably my doctor would say try to cut that down to one glass and not this big glass, but, you know, like five ounces. It's what's a glass? Is, is this a glass or is this yeah. a glass? No, it's a five <laughs> ounces, I think. that's. Is what, that what yeah. um, the standard is? I think that's the standard. I'm not sure. It could be four ounces, but I'll say five. <laughs> Everything on the higher Push end. Push it up. Yes. <laughs> so. but, but, but the wine that um, helps to metabolize, you know, it's, it's wine is, yes, it's alcohol, and that's not good for you. But if you curtail your habit, and you use it to enhance whatever you're eating, like it was originally planned or, you know, designed, then the meal is just very, very uh, delicious. Well, there's no doubt of a certain other, um, shall we say, benefits of drinking alcohol, and that's the euphoria well, and uh, the release of stress. Dopamines. Dopamines. So... It's not. It's one of those things that almost impossible for people to uh, quit as a habit. 
Well, you know, we're not overdoing it. We're talking about moderation. But Ava, do you remember the story you told me? Ava is a uh, uh, natural. She was uh, born in in Hungary, and she said there were all these elderly women or mature women in the town square in the afternoons, very happy. And what were they doing? They were drinking. Um, in Hungary, we have a drink called palinka, which is a sort of a plum liqueur. Ooh served in these very artistic small glasses oh, yeah. around a, a central pitcher. Oh, interesting. And so the ladies would gather it at lunch and they would pour themselves one, two, three, four of these little tiny things, which was so high in alcohol <laughs> that they'd get schnockered. <laughs> very happy ladies. Very happy. Yeah. So I know that how culturally embedded mm -hmm. these traditions are. And I did some research about the benefits of alcohol and wine. And of course, as you say, they say that a man to be healthy should only drink two glasses. Max. Maximum. And a woman, one. Oh, darn. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're always at the short end of the scene, aren't we? Sometimes, yes. So anyway, there are no, you, you, it's really remarkable to me that there are no really conclusive research laboratory evidences yet as to the benefits of well, alcohol. Well, the benefit... Because there's so much propaganda yeah, out there and the people who are conducting these are the ones, that are... Are the ones who are promoting it. Yeah. So we really don't know. Now it's it's. Uh, I don't drink at all, um, but that I don't necessarily feel that it's it's what you should do. You should do whatever you want to do, always. And, and she doesn't judge me. I never. No, I don't judge. But I I do feel that one ought to be armed with facts about what you do. Well, it, it's, a, it's a recognized uh, fact that it, if you drink too much of alcohol, you destroy your liver, your pancreas, well, yes, the, and the your gallbladder, mm -hmm. um, because that's trying, that's the filter of the body, and that's trying to tell you, um, stop. But it, but it, even, even two glasses, particularly, I guess, for a woman, mm -hmm. interferes with your ability to concentrate. Oh yeah, no, I'm not talking about driving after that. that or, is, yes, but, um, but your coordination, and well, and your also, memory, and also if you're like reading a book, uh, your focus. You can't focus. Oh, yeah. You yeah. can't focus, and none of these things. If you're working hard all day long, mm -hmm. and you're looking forward to just melting away mm -hmm. all the stress and tension, and you That's don't necessarily very... need your focus need your coordination, need your memory, well then, yes, but... Not, the f but not schnockered. But, but see, for me, something that interferes with what is the natural physical functioning of the body mm -hmm. seems to me that ultimately is, is not necessary. But, but, you're, but you're very... Um, you are a living testament to your convictions, which is purity in the, in, in the whole being. And that's why you have influenced me. I have stopped eating red meat. She has. I, well, I had company last night. My husband went and barbecued steaks, sausages, chicken. I had guacamole salad and salad because all that stuff, truly, and I'm not just saying this to you know have a show or anything. A paleo feast. <laughs> and I was not going to do it because it doesn't make my stomach feel good. Plus, yeah. it doesn't make me feel good the next day. Yeah. You know, in just the regularity of the body, yeah. you, you yeah. bloat, you know. But moderation. And I was, I was just telling Christina about this incredible gentleman who's oh. 105 years old named Robert, um, what is his name? I had it down here somewhere. The French name, Tony. Yeah, Marchand? it's Robert Marchand. Yes. Mm -hmm. 105 years old. And he just broke the record, his own record, actually, oh, I believe, because mm -hmm. who else can break, make any records over 100? Oh. Because it's the, They're not too many it's the over 100 cycling records. 
This you have no cy- competition. <laughs> right, the guy's a cyclist. He's a cyclist from France. And he did uh, 14 miles in an hour. He said he could have done it faster, but he misread a sign of some sort. <laughs> um, what's interesting about it is that they did some interviews with him about why, how is it that you're so strong and healthy and what's your secret? Wine. <laughs> well, he was, one of his jobs was, I believe he was a, a, a wine dealer. But like 40 years before that, right? Something like that. And he drinks wine, but one glass of wine a week. Oh, that's too bad. So, but what else is interesting, he always, he says his diet is um, replete with fruits and vegetables. Yeah, he's a vegan. Fresh Mm -hmm. fruit, but he's not a vegan. Oh, he's not a vegan. No, because what's interesting is... He's not, he was, he ate meat. But at the age of 104, that's last year, Mm -hmm. he saw a movie about the mistreatment of uh, those animals that we raise for food and the torture of those animals, Mm -hmm. and he became a vegan. This is like testimony. Anything can happen, you can, any time, you can decide that you're not going to eat meat. (laughs) If a man at 104 can have a change of heart. Inspiring. Inspiring. Like that that 105-year-old gentleman. Right. It's an inspiration. It it shows, you see, he's one who has lived a very simple life. And this is the key to, to me, longevity, is to live very simply. To, he gets up at the same time, he works out in the morning, he does his stretches, he does his bike rides, he, um, then he goes shopping for all the f- fruits and vegetables, and then he cooks that up for lunch, and then he does a little bit more exercise, and he reads. He's uh, politically interested, so his... His intellectual curiosity has to do with politics. But I think that's a very in, important thing, too, is to nourishment for the mind. Well, my mother-in-law, God bless her, is um, uh, going to be 100 <laughs> yeah, next week on the 16th of January. And um, she um, has done everything in moderation and lived very simply and was a school teacher, fifth grade teacher, for most of her working career. And um, she, I don't. She loved chocolate. That's all I have to say. It's dark chocolate, and that is one of the superfood foods. The su- superfoods is is cho- thank God, huh? There's a, yeah. something good in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not all beets. <laughs> oh no, no, and sticks and berries. No, no, sticks no. And, no, no. I actually, mean, that's another part of the show. No, no actually, just... that's another part of the show. We will continue to inspire you with tasteful, yummy recipes that we found. And then you can access the actual recipe online. So we don't cook it for you, but we give you um, a heads up that it's on, uh, on our website. Yes, and, and you know, I would like to also encourage you out there yes. um, to send us some recipes if you would like. Um, something that... You, you find tasty and nutritious or something maybe in your family or something you've discovered along the way, and then we'll share it with everyone. And it has to be vegan, honey. <laughs> Please, <laughs> because try. I was with uh, my husband at a Vietnamese restaurant, and um, they had everything in a bowl of soup. Like, they had all sorts of parts of the cow, like tripe and tendon. Mystery meat. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking... And I was, I was watching this, um, they had like a, in the restaurant, they had a bar with a TV channel on the food channel, and, it, <laughs> and that was Coney Island hot dogs in the background. Oh. And I'm thinking, I'm not hungry anymore. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. in a hot dog is a lot of mystery. Oh, yes, that's a real mystery food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, most of, the, most of processed foods are pretty mysterious. 
Yeah. Uh, you, you, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. <laughs> so. And I hope that what we've given you is giving you a little bit of food for thought. And um, so please join us uh, next time. Yes, please, um, you know, join us also in your comments. Yes. And we'll, we'll see you. Welcome them. Yes. And we'll see you.